How's it going everybody? I am taking a break from the drawing table today to talk about uh, hand paint. So if you're someone that spend any amount of time at the drawing table, whether professionally or doing your own work, if you put in enough hours, enough mileage uh, drawing on a tablet, on a Cintiq with a pen and pencil, you've probably dealt with hand paint. So I've been working now as a professional artist for about 13 years and I have dealt with hand, wrist, finger, knuckle, joint, elbow pain, in some form or the other for, for many times over and over. So what I wanted to do today is just kind of take you through um, some of the ways that I've uh, tried to deal with my hand pain. Um, just keep in mind as a caveat, as a disclaimer before we start anything else, I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice. So make sure that if you have some serious issues, you talk to a doctor before you try anything that I'm recommending. So uh, before I start, I just want to talk a little bit about um, the anatomy of the hand and um, kind of my understanding of how hand pain works. Again, I'm not a doctor, so this is, this is my best understanding. So if you are a medical professional and you, the things I'm saying are totally stupid, please feel free to point them out in the comments. But, Basically, my understanding is we've got our fingers here. Our fingers are what does the work of, of drawing. They have to move around in these tiny little movements all through the day. You could be someone that presses really hard on the paper. Um, but our fingers are attached to these tendons in our hand, and it's the muscles in our forearm that actually um, make our fingers move. So uh, that's also why, uh, as an artist, you could get elbow pain. You could have pain. I've had pain up in here before. From doing art and that's because you have these fingers are connected to these muscles that are also connected to, to the elbow joint. Um, so this is really the area that we are talking about, well it does extend to the fingers, when we are talking about hand pain. It's this huge giant area that we're talking about. So a quick breakdown of the anatomy, and this is a very simplified breakdown of the anatomy, but the simplest way to think about it is we got fingers attached to tendons and then those tendons are attached to muscles and we have two main muscle groups. We've got the flexors, and the flexors are on the one, on the inside of the hand. I know there's like a technical name for that, like the medial. I'm not even going to try, but anyway, this side of the hand, flexors. This is for when you close your grip, when you grip something. The flexors are the ones that, that make it do that. And then you have the extensors. The extensors are on the opposite side of the hand. Those are the really cool muscles in comic books you see. They're all like, have all the lines, like someone took their hand through through clay and all the all the veins and stuff on the side. Those are your extensors. The extensors are what make you open your grip. So we got flexors closing your grip and the extensors opening your grip. And so when we talk about hand pain, what we're talking about is um, some sort of inability for this whole system of muscles and tendons connected to fingers to deal with the stress of drawing. What the stress of drawing eventually does is it creates um, some sort of inflammation in some part of the hand and on the wrist, someplace it creates inflammation there. And inflammation is, is a very normal part of, of basically dealing with stress. So when you do any sort of exercise, like if you are straining your muscles by lifting heavy weights, you're going to cause inflammation in your muscles. And your body reacts to that inflammation, and when it acts, reacts in a healthy way, it's going to react by um, repairing those muscles, making them stronger, so that the next time they are stressed, they can handle the stress better. Now, things can go wrong when you stress the body too much and you don't give it a chance to recover and repair from the inflammation. And so as an artist, when you are drawing a lot all day every day, using these small little muscles and tendons over and over again, areas along this whole chain can get inflamed and then if you don't get it, give it a chance to rest and, re and kind of respond healthily to it, that's when you can have problems. That inflammation can stay there, it can get worse, you can get carpal tunnel, you can get all sorts of issues along your hand and arm. So uh, when we're dealing with, um, with hand pain, you have to think about how can we make this whole uh, you know, connection and, and family of muscles and tendons, how can we make that healthy? How can we make it responsive and adaptive to the stress of drawing? So the number one thing, I think the most important thing when dealing with hand pain that you're going to have to address 
is you need to give your hands and your arms some sort of rest. Uh, so that whole issue of how you're going to decrease inflammation besides just straight up rest, absolutely talk to a doctor about that. I'm not going to give my recommendations. You have, um, you know, anti-inflammatory drugs, you have steroids, you have ice, you have all those other things. I'm not going to get very much into that. There's lots of different ways you can go with that rest and with reducing inflammation. And I really think you should talk to a professional um, in, in that regard. But suffice it to say, you got to find some way to rest the arm before you can really start to, to um, repair it and make it healthy. So um, along those lines, one of the things that really helped me right out the gate when I dealt with hand pain was to reduce other things besides drawing that irritated and, and caused more strain on my hands and wrists uh, than I, I needed to. So uh, one thing for sure that you should look to see if you can um, minimize is the use of a mouse. And there's been lots of research and lots of evidence that overuse of, of a mouse can cause all sorts of issues with the hand and the arm. So try to see how you can reduce using the mouse. In my case, because I was an artist, I just started using my tablet as a mouse. And I even was in situations where I was drawing on a Cintiq most of the day, but I had a tablet next to me and I would use the tablet as a mouse when I wasn't drawing at, on the Cintiq. And that really was beneficial because one of the issues with, with these malfunctions in the, in the hand and the arm from drawing is just overuse. We're using the same little muscles and tendons over and over again. And so if you can just like reposition yourself a little bit, that can make such a big difference. So having a Cintiq and having a tablet uh, to the side can be very, very healthy. And you may even find as an artist that there's different things those different tools can, can do better. So um, I would recommend trying that out. The other thing that was extremely helpful to me was to really minimize uh, the amount of time I spent playing mouse-based video games. Um, I absolutely love games like StarCraft. I love MOBAs like League of Legends, like Heroes of the Storm. And these are probably the absolute worst types of games you can play if you have hand issues because these are games that all require spamming of mouse buttons and moving, making small little movements around. And I have absolutely found in my own um, case that the more that I minimize playing those types of games, the better my hand pain did. I saw very, very dramatic results as soon as I just eliminated using a mouse and stopped playing these video games that were very mouse reliant. So after minimizing mouse-based video games and just the general usage of using a mouse out of my, my daily routine, the other thing I started focusing on was flexibility and strength. Um, like I said, we've got the system of tendons and muscles um, and, you know, one of the things that's going to help them is just to make them more resilient to, to stress and strain by making them flexible and, and stronger. You know, the definition of strength is just that it can handle more, right? And even if, even if you train it by, by, you know, gripping on very heavy weights or whatever the case may be, it will make it more resilient to those small little movements. And the same with those, those, those tendons. The more flexible they are, the less they're going to be susceptible to that inflammation. Um, and one principle that's super important as I start talking about um, flexibility and strengthening is just this idea of, of balance. One of the things that can cause uh, those issues to be exacerbated is um, an imbalance in those tendons and those muscles. And so I'm going to get a little bit more into that in detail in a bit, but the general idea is that whatever you do to the, the flexors, you also kind of want to do with the extensors. You want to make sure that it's balanced so there isn't some sort of greater strain on, on one side than the other. Um, so let me talk about some of the specific things I do uh, as far as flexibility is concerned. As far as flexibility is concerned, I just try to hit the flexors and the extensors in my flexibility. Um, there's lots of ways you can do this. You can do stretches where you basically um, put your hands down on the floor like you're doing a push-up and you can stretch them that way and just kind of move them closer to your waist as they get uh, more and more flexible. You can flip your hands around the other way and um, put your weight down on them like this. Um, same type of idea. I also, you can just, just do it by, you know, holding your hand up like this and, and just kind of twisting, twisting your hand to get a little bit of a different stretch on it. And then for the extensors, the same type of thing. You want to just stretch these extensors. 
I generally like to do a stretch like this where I just extend my hand and pull my wrist back. Again, you can kind of twist your wrist. If you twist your wrist, you'll, you'll kind of get it a different stretch. And you kind of, kind of search for where that flexibility does the best. Another one is just um, something like this where you grab your wrist, push down your elbows, and um, that will help you as well. Um, I also like to start uh, by doing just some, some wrist mobility. And this is just as you move your wrists, um, this is just going to kind of lubricate the joints. So that as, as you get in and start trying, um, everything's just going to kind of flow more freely. So doing wrist circles like this, you know, just moving your fingers around like you're some sort of creepy weirdo or magician, um, that's going to help your elbows, kind of just get, getting some movement to your elbows. All that stuff's going to kind of help lubricate those joints, get those moving, and kind of uh, get some of that, that flexibility. Um, so that's kind of what I do with flexibility. For strength, um, I have a couple of uh, fun toys that I've used for, for kind of strengthening those muscles. Um, one of the best things that I've found is um, these little tools called the Handmaster Plus. And just in a, as an aside, I don't receive any kickbacks from this stuff. This is just the stuff I've used. So um, DocZack.com, that's where you go to get these. Uh, these come in three levels of, of stiffness, last time I checked, and that just means how hard it is to, to squish these. Um, the lightest one, the less stiff one, the one that's easiest to squish, I think, is a light blue. This is the, the highest level. So what you basically want to do is get the lowest level and work with that and then work your, work your way up. And so this basically works by this idea that you kind of squish this squishy ball, and that'll get those, those flexors going. Then it has this attached uh, rubber band thing. As you extend, you also get that um, extensor work as well. So you're getting that balance and strength, the flexors and the extensors. So I use these, um, worked my way up when I was having some hand pain. I had, had really great results with these. The general um, uh, instructions um, and the documentation is just that you kind of do them until you get a fatigue in your forearms. And that seems to be enough, just doing a little bit of that every day. Um, so that was the first one. And once, once I finished with these, I started to move up to just playing around with these grippers. Um, and this one is actually the heaviest one I got because I was, I was going to work up to this and I can't get anywhere to even closing this gripper. Here's, here's my best attempt, you know. So um, these are, are different than kind of the cheap grippers you might find at a big box store that have the plastic handles. These are specialty made um, for um, gripping, grip training. Um, and to, to find these, you're going to want to go to a place like Iron Mind. Um, and Captains of Crush is, is a brand that makes kind of a, the higher end uh, um, type of, of these grippers. And so I actually have some Captains of Crush. I, I can't find them. Um, so this is the only one I could find. But I wanted to show you this. And to kind of go along with these, you'll again want to get something to uh, strengthen the extensors. And so Iron Mind also makes these, which is just a collection of rubber bands. But they come in, in varying thicknesses. So the lightest one is like a white. Uh, all the way up to, I think the red. The red is the, the thickest one. If you don't want to buy these, I mean, just save your rubber bands off of your broccoli when you get stuff at the store. Uh, but it's nice that they're color coded and, you know, you do have this already set progression you can go through. Um, and again, they're for working the extensors. You put them on the edge of your fingers. You can open them up. Um, and sometimes I just like to kind of put a finger on the thumb or, or pinky just to keep them from sliding off my fingers. But I have really enjoyed using these as well. It's kind of funny because uh, I was watching some documentary about a strongman the other day and, and like all the stuff is branded Iron Mind. I mean, they make stuff for like the strongest people in the world, like people that have, um, you know, hams for fists. And I'm just like some wimpy artist that also uses Iron Mind stuff. So, you know, maybe Iron Mind needs to get on that uh, artist bandwagon and <laughs> start looking at that demographic. So um, those have worked great too. And there's one that I've discovered, this, this exercise I found that I really enjoy. This is something I, I found just by like reading about jiu-jitsu and kind of the, the stuff they do for strengthening their, their grip. Um, there's a lot of reasons I really like this. So this is just, it's, just it's, it's called the newspaper crumple exercise. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It's just a newspaper crumpling exercise. You hold like a circular, one page of circulars in your fingers and you just start crumpling it in one hand. 
Uh, it looks very simple and easy. You know, and then once you get to the end here, just kind of give it a couple good squeezes to really, you know, crush it good. Um, and the reason why this is great is that, you know, um, I don't have to like program it. I don't have to plan when I'm going to do it. Like I get circulars a couple times a week. My wife will go through them. When she's done with them, she'll put them in, in a, a bin that I have. And then I'll just, while I'm watching TV, I'll just sit and one hand at a time, do one in the right hand, do one in the left hand, just go back and forth. Um, and you know, you'll find you'll just kind of get that uh, exhaustion, that fatigue in your forearms. And so I, I enjoy doing that. I think that's kind of a nice little exercise that helps to, to keep my, my hands healthy. Um, so those are kind of some of the things I've tried, uh, some of the things that have worked for me to kind of give me that, that hand help. And really, I haven't dealt with any hand issues for the last, um, you know, two or three years since I've, I've kind of started on this journey of, of, you know, letting my hands rest and strengthening and adding some flexibility to them. Um, now I'm at the point, too, where I try and incorporate uh, some type of, of grip training into whatever exercise I do. So I just went through a program that's designed by um, GMB. They're also known as Gold Medal Bodies, and they're uh, an outfit that they do like very gymnastics-based workout programs. And so I work with parallel bars where I'm, I'm doing some grip to support my weight. I've really enjoyed that. They have the other added benefit that you're working out these other parts of your, your bodies as well. So um, that's something else to think of as you progress and as you kind of get that hand strength back, that you can kind of maintain it um, just through kind of regular exercise if you, if you have the right um, workout program. Um, but anyway, um, those are some of my thoughts. Uh, the Really the only thing that I've run into, that I've issue I've had with my hands or wrists is I had like a wrist pain right here that just would not go away no matter how much I did all this other stuff. And I finally went into a doctor, had the doctor check it out, and it turned out it was a cyst, and they were able to take, about, take care of it in one single treatment. So I guess the thing you can take from that, again, just to reiterate the point, um, I'm not a doctor, but hopefully just kind of explaining some of the things I've gone through, some of the things I've tried, can give you some ideas for when you go to your doctor and you can you know, ask your doctor questions and, and maybe give some ideas about treatment options you want to try. So that's my story of hand pain. I hope it was useful for you. If you've had experience with hand pain and found some solutions that work for you, please uh, share them with the rest of us in the comments. Uh, please like this video and please subscribe and we'll see you next time.